Hello everyone, Melissa here. Welcome to your Melissa moment. You guys, I'm apologizing um, in advance because I'm not sure why, but some of my bariatric videos, um, the sound is off. I don't know why. Um, we have like, I don't know. We, we've re-uploaded and redone things and it's still not working right. I don't know if it's our editing software, my laptop, my husband's laptop. I, I don't know. So I'm hoping this video is okay. I apologize if the sound is off. We can't figure out what the problem is. Uh, we've never had this problem before, so I'm not sure what the issue is. So apologize in advance in case it's the same for this video. Um, anyway, bariatric, we're going to continue on. If you've been watching, um, kind of my bariatric series, I believe the last video I left you, I had, um, it was surgery day and I had just gone in for my surgery. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, they put me under, um, didn't even do the countdown. You know how they're like, count back from a hundred. Didn't even do that. Didn't even do that. Uh, they were just talking to me, asking me questions. And before I knew it, I woke up. So, yeah. Um, woke up in recovery, really groggy, but felt fine. Um, I honestly cannot remember anything <laughs> about recovery room. I remember a nurse talking to me. Um, I remember her asking me questions. I don't remember much else and then I must have fallen back asleep and I woke up again in my hospital room again really groggy um, don't remember much of surgery day don't remember much uh, I do remember um, <sighs> first let me just say communication is not their strong suit. And I mean, to be fair, I was really groggy and in and out from the anesthetic. So they might have told me, but I don't recall anything. All I know is when I woke up in my hospital room, I had the driest mouth ever that I have ever had. It was so dry that if I tried to talk, I could only say a couple words before I literally couldn't even talk because my mouth was so dry. I've never experienced that before. Um, it was really weird. Now, you got to remember, number one, I'm in my own hospital room. I don't have a roommate in there. It's just me. I wake up, I'm still in and out, groggy from anesthetic, there's no nurses around, there's nothing. So I wake up and you know they have those little kind of tables, right, that are on wheels by your hospital bed. And I woke up and there was a small styrofoam cup filled with water right beside my bed. Now, I'm not stupid because I know I just had gastric bypass surgery. I'm not supposed to be guzzling any fluids. They always say, like, I've, I've read through everything they've given me. I've done all the classes, and everything I ever read says, sip your fluids slowly. Just sip them. So, I mean, what else am I going to think? There's a styrofoam cup of water right by my bed. My mouth is extremely dry. So I'm thinking that's there for me to sip on. So I took the smallest sip, smallest sip, no issues, no pain, no nothing, smallest sip, okay, took that. Um, I did that about three times, probably over about 15 minutes, just little sips because my mouth was so dry. Then the nurse came in to do my vitals. So she came in, did my vitals. She showed me, um, they gave me for pain management, the little button that you push when you need pain medicine. And she's like, here's your button. 
right? And she did the whole, you know, we recommend you don't wait until your pain level's really high. You want to get ahead of it. So if you get to about, you know, a five in pain, push your button kind of thing. Um, my pain honestly never really got over a four, but um, I like pain medicine. Uh, I know that sounds weird to say, but honestly, um, I was really sick as a child. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, my phone. Let me let me check who this is. Nobody. I was really sick as a child, and I was. Oh, it is somebody. Hang on. One moment. Okay, we're fine. Um, really sick as a child, and I was kind of in and out of the hospital. And back then, uh, they had a drug called Demerol. Amazing drug. But I did get addicted to it. So I do have a bit of a mm, dependence on pain medicine. Uh, I'm not addicted to it now. I was, but I'm not now. And they no longer give Demerol because it is a highly addictive drug. So that's fine. Um, they were giving me Dilaudid is what they were giving me. Now, I had a bad experience with Dilaudid recently um, where I got extremely sick from it. So uh, I was hesitant to kind of use it. So I did use it sparingly, but probably more than I needed to, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, so she shows me my pain button. She shows me the call button if I need anything. Your first day out of surgery, they do not want you getting out of bed without a nurse because you're still under, you know, anesthetic still in your system. There's a chance that you could fall or hurt yourself or pass out or whatever. Um, so they're like, do not get out of bed without a nurse. You have to call us. It's like, okay. Um, and remember, if you watch my other videos, they did not put a catheter in. Okay. Did not put a catheter in. So, um, uh, and you're also hooked up to your IV. So you have this whole machine that's, checking all of your vitals and your IV and all that stuff. So they basically need to unplug that machine from the wall and you got to walk with that machine um, to the bathroom. So while she was there, I said, yeah, maybe I'll use the bathroom while you're here. Okay, fine. So um, that was fine. Um, I was fine, like pain wise. And like I got out of bed pretty easily. Um, I didn't really need the nurse there. But like I said, they don't want you getting out of bed without the nurse. So she helps you to the bathroom kind of thing. Now, um, one thing that they don't tell you ahead of time, but I was aware of this because my husband had surgery in August. Um, they had, like I had, because it was my private room, I had my own bathroom. Thank goodness. Um, but they had a little, it looked like a, um, almost like a bedpan on the toilet. Because... They need to measure the volume of urine that you have to make sure everything's working right. So um, the first day, you know, you go to the bathroom and it literally fills up this little cup and there's measurements on it. And so the first day I just went to the bathroom and then I didn't, you know, I just basically left it. Uh, because the nurse had to check the measurement and stuff. So she would check the measurement and she would dump the urine and flush the toilet and kind of gross, but whatever. She's a nurse. I guess she's used to that kind of stuff. So the first day, well, it was pretty much the whole time I was there, actually. Um, you have to pee in this little thing and check your measurements. So the first day I kind of just left it and she did it. And then as like, I think it was the second day, the nurse was like, you can dump it yourself and just write the measurement on your whiteboard. Because every room has a whiteboard that they list your uh, doctor and your nurses so you know who your nurses are for every shift because obviously it changes all the time so after the first day i started tracking it on the whiteboard myself and dumping it and flushing the toilet myself i know it's gross sorry guys um but anyway so she went to the bathroom got back into bed and then after she was done doing all my vitals blood pressure all that kind of stuff temperature everything um she was going to leave my room and she hadn't moved my little tray back to me yet. Um, so I had said to her, I said, oh, another thing I should say, you also have um, compression. Mm -hmm. um, they're not stockings, but they're, I don't know how to say it. It's like um, they Velcro to your legs, your, your calves. So they Velcro there and they're a compression machine that uh, fills up with air 
and then goes back down. Uh, that is to help prevent blood clots because obviously on your first day, you're not really up and moving too much. So they have these things strapped to your legs as well. That's filling up with air and deflating. Um, so, I mean, not the most comfortable thing, honestly, you know, you got to sleep through it and all that stuff. So you've got your IV, your machine, and then these compression things on your legs as well. So there's a lot of tubes and stuff, right? So you call the first day, get the nurse to help you undo everything and do everything back up and all that kind of stuff. It's fine. Honestly, your first day at a surgery, you're pretty much sleeping 90% of the time, to be honest with you. Um, so anyway, uh, when she was leaving, she didn't push my little table back. And I said, can I get some water, please? I, I, my mouth is really dry. And don't forget, I've already had three sips of water without anyone knowing because I was alone in my room. And then she says to me, oh, you actually, you, you can't drink anything today, but here, use this. So the first thing I'm like, okay, number one, I wasn't told I couldn't drink anything today. And number two, why was there a styrofoam cup of water by my bed for me to wake up to when you probably know I'm waking up with an extremely dry mouth and my first instinct is to sip the water? Now, I never told her that I sipped the water. Um, I didn't feel any pain or discomfort, so I was just like, okay, I guess I won't sip any more water today. But she said, use this. Use this. And I didn't realize, but this apparently was on the tray as well. I don't know. I, I don't frequent hospitals. I don't know what this stuff is. I've had three surgeries prior to this. I've never seen one of these before. So she unwraps it for me. And she hands it to me. You guys, it's a sponge on a stick. Apparently, you dip it in the water and you put it over your lips and your inside of your mouth to moisten it. Apparently, that's what you do. No one told me. At least I don't recall anyone telling me. So, okay, fine. <clears throat> so this was all I could have for like the first two days is this stupid sponge on a stick. Now... This apparently is a flavored oral swab, is what they call it. I don't know what it's flavored like. It smells like sponge to me. <clears throat> I don't remember a flavor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, that's all she told me. And because I'm in and out, I never actually read the package or anything, but I'm reading it today, okay? And this is what it says. Moisten swab with water solution. Oral rinse if desired, clean your mouth for approximately one minute, and then discard it after use. You guys, I used the same one for like two days. Because again, no one told me, no one gave me a fresh one. It was ridiculous. So I'm telling you this because I want you to be, be prepared. Now, obviously, every hospital is going to be different. Every shift change is going to be different. Every doctor is going to be different. This is my experience from the Regina General Hospital. For the most part, the day nurses were really good. For the most part. The night nurses, however, they were horrible. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um... There were a lot of issues with the hospital. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot. Um, but we'll get to that as we go along. So that was day one. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, they gave me <clears throat> this afterward. <clears throat> Excuse me. Day one. Now, they consider day one the day after surgery. So there's your surgery day and day one. So... I, I misspoke there. That was my surgery day. That was Monday, my surgery day. That was pretty much it. I called every time I had to use the bathroom. Um, I slept for most of it. I did uh, get my phone. I did talk to my husband to let him know I was kind of okay. Um, I think I talked to my daughter that day. I can't remember. But I was pretty much in and out all day sleeping. Uh, they would come in, I don't know how often, but at least four times throughout 
the probably 24 hour period to check vitals and that kind of thing. Um, I had my pain button. I had the call button if I needed it. <clears throat> but that was pretty much it. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Day one, the day after, they brought me this. And it tells you what you're allowed to have and some reminders. Okay. Um, so the other thing is, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure on surgery day, I was also up and walking. I think I walked down the hall a little bit. Um, not that far. <clears throat> Excuse me, my <clears throat> throat is dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I didn't walk that far and I had the nurse with me. Um, they like you up and walking as soon as possible just to help with blood circulation, to help avoid the, any blood clots or any complications. So I did do a small walk on surgery day. I do remember that. Um, day one, you're allowed to have water. Yay. Um, so you're allowed one fluid ounce every hour. Okay. You guys, that's not much. They gave you little paper, you know, the little paper cups you get when you go to like a fast food restaurant for ketchup, the little ones, pretty much that a little smaller than that. They give you one of those. And you're allowed one of those every hour. So you're just sipping, just sipping. Keep in mind, my mouth is still extremely dry, extremely dry, but you got to sip it. Okay. Um, so it says here, use the one ounce medicine cup provided to you in hospital. That's all you're allowed to have you guys. And then they want you to write down the amount of all the water you drink on the fluid, rec fluid record sheets. So they give you one of these bariatric surgery fluid record. So you write down the time. <clears throat> so here at 8 a.m. I had 10 milliliters of water. I know it's hard to read. Then at 9 a.m. I had another 10 mils of water. And then at 925 I had another 10 mils of water. I basically was doing 10 mils the whole way through. Um, up until the next afternoon, I started doing like 30 mils, um, pretty much at a time. So yeah, the first day, just water and you write it all on here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that was it for the first day. I also did another walk. Now this, the first day after surgery, I still called the nurse to say, Hey, I have to go to the bathroom or whatever. Um, actually it was that night. I had said I need to go to the bathroom. It was one of the night nurses. Horrible, horrible man. Um, he basically came and said, you can get out of bed yourself. I'm like, oh, okay, well, no one told me. Last I heard, don't get out of bed without a nurse. So I was like, fine. Like, he was just not nice. Horrible man. So, I mean, and you got to remember, like, you just had surgery. You're not supposed to, like, lift anything heavy. You're not supposed to, like, pull or push on things. So now I have to pull the, <clears throat> excuse me, the plug-in for my IV machine out of the wall to disconnect it. I'm taking off my leg compressions myself. I'm turning off the machine for the leg compressions. So it's not still going while they're not on my legs. I'm doing all this myself the day after surgery. So what I'm trying to say is don't rely on hospital staff, um, most of them really won't be there for you. You're going to have to rely on yourself and you're going to have to be careful and you're going to have to go slow. Um, <clears throat> I'm one of those people that I'm very independent and I have a very low opinion of people to begin with because I find most people don't do their jobs right and the people that try to do their jobs usually don't do them well at all and it's just easier and better if I do it myself. So I figured out how to turn off the leg compression machine, how to turn on the leg compression machine. I did that all on my own because you can't rely on anybody. You, you just can't, um, especially at Regina General Hospital. My opinion. 
Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry guys. Um, that was fine. So after he was like, you don't need to call us. You can just go to the bathroom. I just started doing everything myself at that point. So that was the day after surgery. I'm like, fine. Thanks for being a nurse. Like, horrible. Anyway. Um, so the day after surgery, like I said, I walked around. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Why do I have something in my throat? I'm going to pause, go get a drink because this voice is not working for me. I'll be right back. <clears throat> 